Hey guys, it's Nate, AKA The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. We're all gonna be starting our EAFC 24 Ultimate Team so soon on the web app. And today what I wanna do is help you get the best start. A lot of tips, tricks, and best practices are coming your way today so you can have a successful web app period on FC 24. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up on it, subscribe if you're new, and let's get going. First of all, we gotta even talk about when is the web app dropping? When are we gonna be able to get on this thing and that date has been leaked. It is the 20th of September, which is not a surprise. That was kind of the date that we thought it was going to be in the first place. So watch out for this next Wednesday as the first opportunity to get on the web app. And of course, this is the web app still FIFA 23 right now, probably going to be shut down in the coming days so that they can refresh it, re-update it so that it is EAFC 24 on this web app. Now, how are you gonna be able to get on this? If you have web app access for FIFA 23, you're in, good job. But it's also a good practice to know that if you have the web app access to try to sign in and also sign into your EA account so that you can get your backup codes and maybe change your authentication way that you verify it's your account because there's been problems before with EA sending out confirmation emails and people waiting for hours because their systems are backlogged as everyone's trying to sign on the web app. So just some things you can do beforehand to make sure you're ready to go. Now, all we have to do is sign in. And now that we're signing in, just like we will be at the start of EAFC 24, we log into the web app for the very first time. Just imagine it with me, right? This is still the FIFA 23 web app, of course. But just imagine we're logging in for the first time. Where do you want to go? What are you going to see? Well, of course, you're going to see your starter nation. You get to pick between a top nine nation, and there's always some debate about what you should do here. Don't spend a lot of time figuring it out. Pick one of the top nine nations that works best for you. Honestly, there's a couple that maybe work a little bit better for the starter SBCs than others. I'm talking Brazil. I'm talking Germany. I'm talking France. Maybe England or Argentina. There's a shot for those as well. But really, just pick one that you think is going to work well for you, because really the cards you get from this are going to be going into those starter SBCs that we will be doing pretty soon here in just a bit. Now also you're going to be picking your kit, you're going to be picking a badge for your ultimate team club, and honestly, don't pick your favorite one. Pick the biggest club or nation that you see because I'm pretty sure that these badges and these kits end up being tradable and a lot of people want to, you know, kit out their ultimate teams with their favorite country or favorite club's kit right away. So if you see a Manchester United, a Real Madrid, or maybe a Tottenham Hotspur kit, you should probably pick that one because it might actually get you a couple extra coins on the market in those first early hours when you get on the web app because people will be buying those for their ultimate teams because they want to make sure they got all their kits, badges, and stuff equipped from the start. So that's a small tip that you maybe not know that's probably pretty massive. Now, when you get into the web app for the first time, after you do that, you're going to go to have your squad. You'll pick a lone player. That really doesn't matter too much, in my opinion. Just pick somebody who's good and who's meta. And then straight from there, you're in. Welcome to the web app. You're going to have the market. You're going to have the store. And that's the biggest thing where you're going to want to go straight off of the bat. And of course, what's a store without a preview pack, right? You're probably going to want to go in and open up your preview pack. Now, if you get a Banyas and a preview pack in FC24, he's like 80-something rated with 85 pace. He looks like a cracked card for a Saudi League starter team. A lot of people are talking about him. So if you get that pull in FC24, you're off to a great start. But make sure you check out your preview pack. You may not even have enough coins to buy it right away, but you'll get 24 hours if you get something good to go ahead and buy that pack. So that's always something you should open right away. And then always at the start of a brand new ultimate team there are packs that show up in the store we're talking about the welcome back packs now i don't know what those are going to look like um, in fc24 we're imagining that you still have welcome back packs that could come to your account if you played fifa 23 especially uh, and if you did on the same account you probably will have some sort of welcome back packs those are kind of necessary so that you have something coming into your club but the whole point is you want to come to the store and open packs because after you start your ultimate team your club is basically empty you've got a starter squad with a couple lone players in it you got nothing right and you need packs to actually get your club filled up with something to go and do SBCs. Now, some people ask about FIFA points, right? Now, EA has given us a button to actually add FIFA points, which you can do on the web app and the companion app now. But last year during the web app, they did not allow people to add FIFA points, which of course this year are not FIFA points. They are called FC points. So I would imagine we will not be able to buy or transfer over our FIFA points yet. That'll come during the full 
uh, version of the game when we get on for the Ultimate Edition. That'll be the first date, I believe, we'll be able to use those FC points. Now, we're going back to opening the packs, right? We're talking about the Welcome Back packs. Um, those are the packs you're going to want to open right away. I'm going to open 85 times 10 just for fun because we're still on FIFA 23. And we pack Salah. Nice. Now, when you pack these players, what should you be selling? What should you be holding on to? Now, think about it. In your mind, what's the next thing you're going to be doing after you open packs, right? It's going to be going and doing SBCs right away to get more packs, probably hopefully increase your coin balance on the market. But specifically for SBCs, that's where a lot of the demand is on the web app. So players that will be useful for SBCs, you will probably want to keep in your club. That would mean players from top nine nations like um, Germany, Italy, you know, English, players and French players, Dutch players, you would want to keep those players in your club, especially if it matches up with the team that you chose or the, the country that you chose for your starter nation. Those would be very important to keep for some of those advanced SBCs a couple, um, maybe a couple hours down the line, but other stuff, maybe some different kits or stuff, or even players that you will see right away when you compare prices that are not selling at all on the market, you will probably just want to quick sell those. Don't be afraid to quick sell cards in the first couple hours of yourself being on the web app because you will need coins. Coins are king in the beginning stages of the web app. Even if it's 1,000, 2,000 coins that you get from quick selling a couple of cards, it is so worth it to quick sell some of those. And sometimes those stadium items, those consumables, like, you know, the stick banners and the TFOs and stuff, just quick sell those. You'll get plenty of those later on. Get your coins right away. Don't be afraid to sell. Now, cards that you maybe actually want to hold on to, let's just open a 7.5K pack for fun. If you pack something that is actually going to appreciate in value, if you get very lucky, and let's say you pack a good inform, maybe a card like Hyunmin Sun or Messi or Mbappe, one of those insane types of players, or a hero or an icon, you're going to want to maybe hold on to that card because it's just going to appreciate so much in value over time that you'll probably just be better off holding the card than trying to sell it right away and then get more coins off of that. There's actually a pretty smart trick as well. As you guys know, icons and informs and some of those higher tier cards have a very high quick sell amount. There's a trick where you can actually quick sell a really good card that you pack. If it has a high quick sell value, let's say you pack an inform, right? Quick sell that card and then use those coins to go out and build your coins. Like it seems crazy to pack an icon, get very lucky and then quick sell it. But then you have like, I don't know what icons quick sell for like 50 or 60 K. You could use those coins to go out and trade, build your coin balance up, or maybe go do a couple advanced SBCs inside of that. And then buy your icon back for the same quick sell value for the coins that it gave you with quick sell recovery, which of course is in, I think the club tab. Yeah, the club tab of the web app, it's right there. Uh, we would assume that it would be a part of FC 24's web app as well. Um, so that's one kind of like sneaky move that you can do. Just don't remember to, don't forget, I mean, and remember to recover whatever card you quick sell that would be worth something. But like, if this is a pack you open at the start of FC 24, this Condoglia, I'd probably be selling it or quick selling it. Uh, this. Ukrainian center back, I'd be selling it. This Rossi, I'd be quick selling it for sure. And then maybe a couple of these cards, like maybe you try to sell the Atlanta United badge. Maybe you try to sell the Premier League league for the manager league as some people will be building their starter teams um, on the web app, which I do not think is a good thing to do. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's actually not a good thing to do. Do not build your teams, but it's all about opening packs right away, right? And just getting some coins because you need coins to do anything and what a lot of people do on the web app right away are SBCs and they're a good thing to do right we all have to start off doing the same SBC though this foundations one SBC I believe it used to be called the let's get started SBC but this is what you want to do after you're done opening whatever packs that they give you whatever packs that you have go to SBCs and get that starter SBC done now usually it just requires some bronze and silver cards and actually this is one of the best places to trade on the market with bronze cards from some of those top nations i remember last year specifically trading with bronze brazilian and i think it was german and brazilian like right mids because they were over a thousand coins on those first couple hours on the web app they were so good to trade with uh, because those were the SBCs that everybody was doing. And those were the types of players that you needed to complete those SBCs. So watch for bronze and silver cards in the first couple of hours. Actually, guys, it's crazy to say bronze pack method 
was very overpowered for a couple of hours. Even with the 750 coin packs, people were opening these, packing a couple of bronze cards in each pack that were selling for maybe 500 to 1,000 coins per card. Like this um, German striker. I don't know if German strikers were selling, but if you had a defender or a right back or a right mid, some of those players were selling for over 1,000 coins, and you were easily making profit on some of these bronze packs combined with the quick sell value that were, you were getting back from each pack as well. So that's something to watch out for this year as well. But after you, of course, open the packs, like we mentioned, it's all about the SBCs. You have to do, like we said, the foundations one SBC first, but then after that is where it gets interesting because after you do the foundations one SBC, which gives you a couple of bronze packs, nothing insane, a lot of people will tell you to go and do the hybrid leagues and the hybrid nations SBCs. And you can see, I didn't even finish the Hybrid Nations SBCs last year in FIFA 23. I did the Hybrid League and the Hybrid Nations, but I didn't finish the combo one. And really, that's just because last year, EA made the packs untradeable. And it actually made the web app so annoying. Because we had six days of the web app where you, after you did the SBCs, there was nothing else to do. Thankfully, this year, there's only a two-day period on the web app where we get on before we get on the actual game through the Ultimate Edition or a 10-hour early trial. But that was so annoying uh, that these were untradeable because those were always SBCs that we did to go and get coins, right? You would pack tradable cards from them, and then you go to the market, and you would sell them, and you would make coins. That's why those were great. This year and last year as well, if these are untradeable again, which I'm imagining they will be, you definitely don't have to do them. They're not worth doing if you don't have a lot of coins and it takes too much sweat and effort to do that. You could just go straight to the market and actually start trading with some of those players that we just mentioned, bronze, silver, and gold cards. There will be people doing the advanced SBCs just because people love packs and people want an opportunity to pack something good. But what I would tell you to do is Take a look at your coin balance. If you have a lot of coins or if you have a couple of players in the club, then maybe you start to do one or two of those just for fun. But just be careful. In the early stages, people will be opening all their welcome backpacks and cards will be so cheap on the market. I'm talking gold cards like last year. I remember informed Kevin De Bruyne was literally about 90, I think he was like 60 or 70,000 coins. And he went to 95K within a couple of hours. It was the informed De Bruyne. And like two weeks later, he was four to 500,000 coins just because the rarity, man. It, yeah, it was like the 90 rated, the first one that dropped. Or maybe it was 92. Yeah, 92 KDB. This card was so cheap. Obviously, it's the end game now. So he's, you know, this card price. But those cards were so cheap early on because nobody had a lot of coins, but people were packing cards from those packs that were given out. So there's a lot of supply, but not a lot of demand. So that's kind of what I would do, guys. I would go to the store right away. I would, then I would go complete the Foundations 1 SBC, which is learning the basics. And then from there, you kind of have to decide what you want to do. Go to the market and start trading and flipping cards. Or do you want to go and do more SBCs? Now, I will say this. Things that you don't want to do on the web app, guys. You don't want to build a starter team, okay? I know it's tempting. We talked about that at Banya's card already. Don't go on the web app and start buying players for your team because look, if you bought this Lacroix card, it was one of the most popular starter team players last year with 87 pace as a French center back and lengthy, right? And also just a FIFA meta legend anyway. He was 7,000 coins when the web app came out first day. People were building starter teams. They got onto the game on Tuesday, which was the full early access release the Tuesday after the Wednesday web app. It was forever last year, guys. I don't know if you remember from Tuesday to Wednesday, right? Or sorry, from Wednesday to Tuesday, he was like seven to 8,000 coins. Look what happens the day after everybody gets out of the game. He goes from 8,000 coins to being one week later, 1K, literally 1,000 coins because people move on from a card like this so fast, right? Other players you would want to watch out for to not buy in an early stage is a guy like St. Juice Day. If you're not going to play a ton of games right off the bat, wait two, three, four days before buying a starter team or just do the SBCs to try to get untradeable players to put in your team or just play with a really bad team for like two or three days and then wait until prices drop down until a card like this goes from like 10K to like two or 3K where it doesn't hurt to lose two or 3K in the early stages like it does to lose 10,000 coins 
on a card like this. That is one of the worst things you can do during this period is build a starter team on a cheap budget because those cards are all inflated because that is what everybody is doing. And you also don't want to waste all your coins on SBCs. You got to be frugal. You got to be careful because coins are king, especially earlier on when the market's going to be appreciating so much on a lot of those higher tier players. Remember Erling Holland's gold card last year going from like 30,000 coins day one? Yeah, he was like 30 to 40,000 coins. He went all the way to 400,000 coins two weeks later, right? Those are the sort of price appreciation. I mean, that's about as drastic as it gets. But you're going to see some crazy price rises because people are getting on the game and they're getting coins and they want to buy those really insane players. So that's some of the things I would tell you not to do. Waste your coins and don't build a team. Things you should do is check objectives, especially this year as we have the opportunity for evolutions, getting into the objective section and checking out even what things you can do without playing a game. Sometimes like listing cards or doing a number of SBCs will get you some of those like foundation objectives where you can get a few coins, get a few packs here or there. That's something to look into right away to get yourself going and get the ball rolling and more cards in your club. And then also prepare for when the full game drops. Maybe you're like, okay, I'm going to do this evolution right away. Um, and so I'm going to start building my team or not even building your team, but just kind of formatting how you're going to approach the game when you're actually able to get on to the full game on uh, the ultimate edition or the full edition release date so that you can be prepared for success when you start getting onto the game and actually playing the game. So that's everything for the web app guys right there. Um, that's all that I can come up with. I think there's a lot of really good tips in there. I think if you do things in that order, you're going to start off the web app in a really, really good way. Now, of course, follow a lot of the videos we're going to be having upcoming after this talking about trading best ways to make coins on the web app. And of course, helping you guys have big success at the start of EAFC 24. If you enjoyed this video today, drop a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions. And of course, subscribe if you are new. It's been Nate, the foot accountant. See you guys in a video tomorrow. Peace out.